Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate the 2D Ising model Hamiltonian. I'm going to assume that you have the state of the system stored in a 2D NumPy array, and we are then going to compute the energy from this array using Python. So, the Hamiltonian for the 2D Ising model is given by the expression shown here. You will see this expression written out in different ways in different textbooks. What I hope to convince you by the end of this video is that what we are computing here is not very difficult. It is, however, difficult to express what we are doing using simple mathematical no um, notation. As you will see, things are much easier to understand if we use diagrams. Before getting onto the diagram, let's define all the terms in this expression. Firstly, the sigma i and sigma j in this equation are spin coordinates. In other words, these are the ones and minus ones that tell us whether the corresponding spins are in their up or down state. H is the magnetic field strength. We normally give H in units of j, the coupling constant. Doing this then allows us to set j equal to 1. Notice that all the spins in the system interact with the magnetic field. This first sum thus runs over all of the spins. In fact, this first sum is equal to the magnetization, the sum of the spins. Each spin then interacts with its neighbours. This second sum thus runs over all pairs of neighbouring spins. This is a part of the equation where the nomenclature is a little kludgy and where you will see lots of variety in the textbook. Let's discard the equations and draw a diagram so we're all clear on what we mean. In this diagram, the red spins indicate all the spins that the spin in blue interacts with. These are the, the spins that appear in that second term for the blue spin. The red spins are the so-called first coordination sphere of the blue spin. They are the four spins that are nearest to the blue spin, as the red circle indicates. Having hopefully cleared up what the equation means by drawing a diagram, we are now in a position to write a Python function to calculate the energy. This function is shown here. The first term of the energy that is returned here is the first term in the equation on the slide. This is the part that describes the interactions of the spins with the magnetic field. I use the sum command twice here because numpy first sums the rows of the matrix to return a vector. When I then sum the vector of row sums, I get a single scalar. Above this return statement, I have a double loop over all of the spins, which is the part that computes the second term in the mathematical expression. This is the part that computes the interaction between the spin pairs. In this expression, the spins ij refers to the spin that is shown in blue on the diagram. This spin is multiplied by the spins of its four neighbours, which can easily be found by adding one or subtracting one from the i or j indices. You can see which spin in the diagram each of the terms of the programme corresponds to here. Now, you may be wondering what the percent sign is doing in this expression. Well, first of all, in Python, the percent sign is used to indicate the modulo or operator. When you perform this operation on two integers a and b, the remainder when a is divided by b is returned. 5% 4 is thus equal to 1, as 5 divided by 4 is 1, remainder 1. 
The reason that we are using modular arithmetic like this here is that we are assuming that the system has periodic boundary conditions. These periodic boundary conditions ensure that the spin on this corner here interacts with these neighbours through the periodic boundaries. The blue spin here will be spin 4-4. Four, four. The modulo arithmetic ensures that this correctly interacts with spin 4-0 and spin 0-4 that are indicated by the red arrows. There is only one last thing to note about this function. The value, e that is accumulated by the double sum is divided by 2 when added to the final energy term here. The reason that we have to divide by 2 is that the double loop counts each interaction twice. To be clear, the double counting happens because when the blue spin is the central spin, spin ij, we can counter count the interaction with this neighbour here. Then, when the red spin to the right of the blue spin is the central atom, we count the interaction here. We thus need to divide by 2 at the end of the loop to remove this double counting that we've done, because each interaction between pairs of spins should only be counted once, whereas we are counting them twice. For the REPL exercises, you will be working with the Ising model that I explain on this slide, and that is illustrated again here. When it comes to doing your assignment, however, I want you to study a different Hamiltonian. You can discuss the Hamiltonian that you plan to study with me, but I just wanted to give you some ideas as to what you might do with these new Hamiltonians. The first thing that you could do is to consider studying a different pattern of interactions. For example, you could look at an Ising model where each spin interacts with its second neighbours rather than its first neighbours. In other words, you could have the central spin that is indicated by the blue arrow here interact with the spins that are indicated with the red arrows here. Alternatively, you can imagine that the spin in the centre interacts with the first and second neighbours here, so this set of spins. If you are going to have all these interactions, a more realistic model would be to have some distance dependent in the interactions. In other words, the spins that are shown by the pink arrows now would have interact more weakly with the central atom than the atoms that are indicated by the red arrows. So one option for your new Hamiltonian is to devise some alternative pattern of interactions between the central spin and its neighbours. Another alternative is to use so-called mean field models. In such models, the interaction between, between neighbouring spins is replaced by an interaction with the mean field, as shown in the equations at the bottom of the slide. The key difference between this mean field Hamiltonian and the explicit interaction Hamiltonian that we were looking at previously is in the second interaction term here. In our previous term, this second term was a sum over pairs of spins. Now, however, we just have the same sum over spins that appears in the first term. The interaction is described by multiplying this sum of spins by the mean spin value, which is calculated by summing all the spins and dividing by the number of spins, as shown here. Obviously, you can also combine these two ideas. You might introduce a Hamiltonian where some spin interactions are described explicitly and some spin interactions are described using a mean field model. In short, you really have the opportunity to be creative in the Hamiltonian you choose to study for your final report on this topic, so go wild. I look forward to hearing about what you plan to study. For now, though, I will finish by thanking you for your attention and suggesting that you start the exercises on the 
um, Hamiltonian for the conventional 2D Eisen model. Goodbye. <laughs>